Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining me for our 75-minute power yoga practice. My name is Tamara Maxim. I'm recording this class live on Facebook, but if you'd like to see it later or any of the other classes that I have, I, I have a YouTube channel under my name, Tamara Maxim, and you can look at all the classes there. And that includes classes for different styles of yoga and for children as well. Today, our practice will focus on the idea of stability. And you can think of stability not being about rigid or inflexible. It's about being aligned to a, a right mind that stays grounded, strong, and yet flexible during times of growth, expansion, challenge, and change. So we'll incorporate this idea of stability throughout our practice today. Take a nice tall seat to begin. You can sit in Virasana like I am on your shin bones, or you can sit cross-legged. Take a few moments to get centered, ready for the practice. Close your eyes if you like, and maybe place your hands face down onto your thighs or your knees. And this creates a little bit deeper sensation of stability and being grounded. Start to focus in on your breath. Notice where the breath is in your body and see if you can start to lengthen and deepen the breath to reach all corners, all edges. And then float your hands to your heart center. Find an intention for your practice today. It might be the word stability or something else that's meaningful for you. You might even like to offer a collective intention, something for the greater good. Something to send out into the communities where we live, or to the country, or to even the entire world. And finally, offer a dedication of your practice. Dedicate this energy that you will cultivate, energy of peace and harmony and balance, stability, Send it out into the world somewhere. We'll open our practice with a chant of one beautiful OM. Take a deep clearing breath in through your nose. Big sigh out your mouth. Inhale for OM. OM. your mind into the beautiful light of your own heart. Remind yourself that your heart is the true mind of this practice, in the center of everything. Again, with your eyes open, if they're closed, bring your gaze back to your center. We'll come forward onto our hands and knees and then make our way all the way down onto the belly. And we'll begin in a beautiful posture lying on the belly. Palms underneath your forehead, forehead down. This is a variation of Advasana, reverse corpse pose. And just letting the whole front line of the body relax. See if you can tune into the space between your eyes, Ajna Chakra, the third eye. Tuning into your intuitive qualities, your inner knowing. Coming back to your intentions, your dedication. Start to cultivate a deeper breath. You can start to narrow the throat slightly, <clears throat> creating the ujjayi breath. That slight constriction creates an ocean-like sound with the inhalation and exhalation. And let your belly press out as you breathe in. <clears throat> let the belly draw in as you exhale. And take your arms out in a cactus shape. And we'll start to roll over to the right side. So with your arm in a cactus shape, start to roll onto your right hip. You can let your left foot drop behind you. Tend to your left fingertips. So maybe look up to the left. To create a little opening in the right shoulder. And come back to your center. Same thing, other side. Left arm in a cactus, roll onto your left hip, 
Tend to your right fingertips. You can let your right foot drop behind you. Take a couple of breaths here, opening up the shoulder. And coming back to center. Bring your palms to the top of your mat and your elbows behind your palms. Everything shoulder distance apart. So your forearms look like a number 11. Press into your palms. Press the tops of your feet down. Start to curl your chin in toward your chest. And as you do that, <clears throat> excuse me, you'll start to round in the upper back. You'll start to draw the belly in. You start to lift the hips up, the thighs up, the shin bones up, pressing into the tops of your feet. Keep rounding with the hips as high as you can. Hug your inner elbows toward each other. Create some space between the shoulders and the neck. Chin in toward the chest. Look right to your belly button and hold here for five. Lift the hips higher. Four, three, two, and one. Slowly lower down the same way you came in. Cup your toes stretch out the feet, lift your chest, a little sphinx pose. So we'll do that a couple more times. Press the tops of your feet down, chin in toward the chest, slowly start to curl the front of the body off the mat. Lift your hips as high as you can, chin in toward the chest, look to your belly for five, four, three, two, one. Slowly lower down, same way you came in. Little sphinx pose, lift your gaze. Two more times. Chin in toward the chest, start to peel the front body off the mat, tops of your feet down, round the spine, look to your belly for five, four, three, two, one, slowly lower down. Nice way to warm up the core. Little foreshadowing of what's to come here, hugging the elbows in. Shoulder distance apart, look to your belly, lift the front body off the mat, hold for five, four, three, two, one, and slowly lower down. This time press into your hands, maybe lengthen your arms, lift your heart, take a full deep breath in, and a full breath out. And slowly lower all the way down. Come back to this Advasana variation again, forehead down. This time bend your knees, the windshield wiper, your feet side to side. A little bit more work with the forearms here. Again, bring your forearms parallel to each other. This time tuck your toes and come into forearm plank pose. Draw the belly in, come high on the toes. See if you can rock the heels more forward and bring your right forearm parallel to the front edge of your mat. Roll to the outer right foot. You can always step your top foot in front if you need. And we'll do a few hip dips, five hip dips, five, your feet can be stuck, four, three, two, and on one, reach your top arm over your head, get a big stretch, maybe float your bottom leg for five, four, three, two, one, come all the way back, forearm plank, come high in the toes, rock the heels forward, draw the belly in, try to dome between the shoulders. Left forearm comes parallel to the top edge of your mat. You can step that top foot in front if you need. Let's up, go up and down for five, four, three, two, and on one, reach your top arm over your ear, maybe float that leg for five, four, three, two, one. Come all the way back, forearm plank, hold here, 10. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Lower all the way down. Press into your hands, lift your chest. Maybe look up. Exhale, lower all the way down. And then slide your palms underneath your shoulders. Tuck your toes, lift your legs. Push all the way up, high plank. Exhale, hips lift up and back, Adho Mukha Svanasana, Downward Facing Dog. Take a full deep breath in and a full deep breath out. One more, inhale, lift your hips high. As you exhale, press your heels down. Look forward to the top of your mat, come high on your toes, bend your knees a lot, walk, step or hop all the way forward. Halfway lift as you inhale. Exhale to fold Uttanasana. Again, Ardha Uttanasana, flat back. 
palms to shins or fingertips in front of your toes. Exhale, fold forehead to shins, Uttanasana. Inhale to rise up, Urdhva Hastasana. Lengthen the tailbone towards your heels. Palms touch as you arch back. Hands to heart center, Samastiti Ki. And let's start to slow. Inhale, reach your arms up to the sky. Urdhva Hastasana, arch back. And it feels good to stretch your belly. Exhale, fold forward, keeping your knees soft if you need. Inhale, lengthen, flat back. Keep the core engaged. As you exhale, plant your palms down. You can walk, step, or hop back to low plank. Take a back bend, either cobra, keeping the thighs down, or Urdhva Mukha Svanasana, lifting the thighs and chest arms straight. And then roll over the toes, come to a high plank position, one chaturanga, stable. Elbows back, push up. You can always have your knees down for that. And then go straight back, downward facing dog. Deep breath in, and a long breath out. You can come high on your toes, bend your knees a lot, look forward, walk, step, or hop. Keep the core strong. For stability, inhale, lengthen, look forward. Exhale, fold. Inhale to rise, Urdhva Hastasana. Lengthen your tailbone, palms touch, reach up. Exhale, fold forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, lengthen, flat back. Plant your palms, walk, step or jump back, high plank to low plank, Chaturanga. Keep your back bend, cobra, upward dog. Press into the tops of the feet like we did at the beginning for that core work. Roll over the toes, high plank position, one chaturanga. Keep the core strong, stable. Downward facing dog, full breath in. Ujjayi breath out. Come high on your toes, bend your knees a lot, look forward. Halfway lift when you get there. Exhale, full. Inhale to rise, Urdhva Hastasana, one more round. Exhale, fold forward. Lengthen halfway. As you exhale, plant your palms, chaturanga. Take your time to get there. Find your back bend. Press the tops of your feet down. Lift your chest. Come back to high plank, chaturanga. Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward dog. We'll take a little variation here. Come back to plank pose. Lower your right forearm down to the mat. Lower your left forearm down to the mat. As we did at the beginning, hug your heels more forward. Come high in the toes, draw the belly in. We'll start to walk the feet in toward the elbow. Full dolphin down dog. And stay here. Come high in the toes, let your head drop. And see if you can create more space between your shoulders. But crown of the head is still lifted. You're gazing between your inner thighs. See if you can create more space. Let the chest push back more between the arms. Deep breath in. And a long breath out. And then slowly start to walk your feet back. Press into your right hand and your left hand. Back to downward dog. Deep breath in. And a long breath out. We'll come forward again. High plank pose. This time left forearm down. Right forearm down. Hug your elbows in. Create more space between the shoulders and neck. Draw the belly in. Start to walk your feet in toward your elbow. Dolphin. Downward dog. Lift your hips high, come high in the toes. Try to push your chest back between your arms. Crown of the head is off the ground, but dropping in the direction of the mat. Keep your hips lifted, hold here for three. Press into your forearms, two, one. Go ahead, step all the way back. Left palm down, right palm down. Downward facing dog, deep breath in. And a long breath out. From here, take your hands a little bit closer to your feet. Wrap your right hand around your outer left ankle, look underneath your arm. It creates stability here by pressing into your left palm. Or you can twist a little deeper under your left arm. Switch sides, stabilize with your right hand. Left hand wraps around the outer right ankle, calf or thigh, bend your knees if you need. Create stability by pressing into your finger pads. Create a strong foundation underneath your right arm. Walk both hands back to the original position. On your inhale breath, come high on your toes. Bend your knees a lot. Look forward. Walk, step, or hop. Halfway lift. Lengthen. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise. All the way up. Urdhva Hastasana. Lengthen the tailbone towards your heel. Create a foundation and then arch back. Stay standing. Hands to heart center. Samastiti. And bring your big toes together to touch. 
near the top of your mat. Your inhale breaths, your hips down, Utkatasana, chair pose. Hug your tailbone towards your heels, draw the belly in. You'll feel that stability of Mula Bandha, the root lock, and Uddiyana Bandha, the mid abdominal lock. And then you can lift your arms up to the sky. Try to have your arms in line with your ears. Keep drawing the belly in, lift your chest a little higher, draw the kneecaps back. Take one more inhale here, lift higher. Exhale, lift your hips and fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, lengthen, flat back. As you exhale, plant your palms, Chaturanga. Walk, step or hop. Take your back bend as you inhale. Make your way back, downward facing dog. Deep breath in, and a full breath out. Inhale, ripple forward, high plank pose, and lower your right knee down to the ground, and your right forearm down to the ground, and open up to the left side, keeping your left leg floating. Stay here, or forearm, Ardha Kapindalasana. Roll your top shoulder open. Press into your right forearm, lift your chest away from the earth, open up to the sky, and let's release. High plank pose. Lower onto your left knee and your left forearm. Turn open to the side. Float your right leg. Reach over your head and then bend your right knee. Ardha Kapindalasana on the forearm. Partridge pose. Open up your chest. Tip your foot into your hand. A little back bend. Beautiful. Come back to high plank pose. Take a big breath here. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, right leg up to the sky. Big breath in. Create a strong core as you bring your right knee to your right upper arm. Cross to the left. Cross to the right again. Cross to the left and swing it all the way back up. Exhale, bring your knee into your chest. Step forward inside of your right thumb. Back heel spins down. Create a stable foundation with your feet. Reach your arms to the sky. Virabhadrasana 1. Pull your outer right hip back, left leg forward. Bend deeply into your right knee. Take a big breath here. As you exhale, hands float to the lower back. Draw your knuckles toward the earth, chest toward the sky. Big breath in. Exhale. Bow. Baddha Virabhadrasana. Let the arms come up over the head. Try to drop the crown of the head toward the earth, but not sacrificing the stability of the pose. So keep both feet down, hugging the outer right hip back, left leg forward. If the crown can come further, keep hugging that right hip back. Close your hands tight together. Hold here, chin to chest, for three, two, one. Now stability with the feet, rise all the way up. Reach your arms to the sky. As you exhale, plant your palms down, step your left toes back, floating your right leg, high plank, chaturanga, float your leg, take your back bend. Come back to high plank pose, chaturanga again, Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward dog. Take an inhale breath, lift your left leg up to the sky. Left knee to left upper arm, cross to the right, to the left, to the right, all the way back up. Knee to chest, so you step through, exhale. Back heel spins down, inhale, rise up. Virabhadrasana one, warrior one. Keep that foundation, that stability of the feet. Your feet are hip distance apart, the heels are hip distance apart. Pull your outer left hip back, right thigh forward. Reach your arms to the sky, big breath in. As you exhale, hands come to the lower back, find the opposite grip. Knuckles travel down toward the earth, chest lifts up toward the sky. Inhale, exhale, bow forward, Baddha Virabhadrasana. Pull your outer left hip back, right thigh forward. Crown of the head coming down, arms lifting up. Keep the stability, the foundation of the pose by hugging that left hip back. Let the crown relax, chin toward the chest. One more breath. Press into your feet. Use that foundation, the stability. Reach up to the sky. Exhale, hands come down. Step your right toes back. Float your left leg. High plank, chaturanga. Both feet down. Press the tops of your feet. Urdhva Mukha Svanasana or Cobra. Roll over the toes. High plank, chaturanga. Create stability through these extra chaturangas, elbows back, hips back and up, Adho Mukha Svanasana, deep inhale, and a long exhale. 
And again, ripple forward, high plank pose. Lower your right forearm down to the mat. Lower your left forearm down to the mat. And again, start to walk the toes in, lifting the hips high. And see if you can bring your right knee to your right upper arm. You can step it back, still in this dolphin down dog. Left knee towards left upper arm. And step it back one more time, each side. Still try to maintain the hips high. Left, right knee, right upper arm. And left knee, left upper arm. Beautiful. Step all the way back. Forearm plank. Press into your right hand and your left hand to downward facing dog. Deep breath in and a long breath out. Ripple forward again. Lower your left forearm and your right forearm. Dolphin forearm plank pose. Start to walk your feet in. Lift your hips high. And lift, lift your right leg up. And we're just going to lift the leg up and down. Keep the left toes connected. Four. Three. Two. And one. Other side. Left leg lifts. Four. Three. Two. And one. Beautiful work. Walk back to plank pose. Left palm down. Right palm down. Downward facing dog. Deep breath in. Downward dog never felt so good. Deep breath out. Come high on your toes. Bend your knees a lot. Look forward. Get some buoyancy here. Walk, step, or hop. Halfway lift as you arrive. Look forward. Exhale, fold. Look towards your shin. Chair pose again, Utkatasana. Get that stability. Press down into your heels. Draw the tailbone toward your heels. Uddiyana Bandha engaged. Abdominal locks working together here. Bring your hands to your heart center. Take an inhale, lean forward. Exhale, twist to the right. Tend your fingers if you like, or flat palm, but press your top palm into your bottom palm or finger pads to finger pad. Twist a little deeper. Stay. Or maybe open the wing. Deep breath in. Long breath out. Come back to chair in the center. Hands to heart center. Lean forward. Twist to the left. Create a foundation here. So hug your right hip and right knee back. Create stability. Maybe open your wings. Pressing top palm into bottom palm or finger pads to finger pads. Inhale. Come back to chair. Smile. Exhale and fold. Inhale, lengthen, flat back. Chaturanga, exhale. Inhale through your back leg. Make your way back. Downward facing dog. Deep breath in. And a long breath out. Let's add in Kundanyasana as an option here. Inhale, right leg lifts to the sky. Right knee to right upper arm. So create stability. Have the elbows back. Maybe chaturanga, float the right toes, extend your leg maybe, float your back toes. Kundanyasana B. Inhale, right leg goes back. Option for fallen triangle as well. So you can hook that right knee to the left upper arm. Maybe bend your elbow, maybe elbows. Extend your right leg, float your back toes. Or you can do here, fallen triangle, right leg extended, left arm up, and then come back. Three-legged dog, reach up, bring your knee to your chest, keep coming forward, step through this time for warrior two. Back heel spins down, back toes pointed slightly forward, front heel to back arch, alignment your heel to heel, and rise up. Get a long foundation between your feet, so wiggle your front toes more forward, knee over the ankle, extend your fingertips forward and back. You can inhale here. Bend a little deeper. Inhale here. Bend a little deeper. Gaze past your front fingertips. One more. Inhale. Exhale. Knee is tracking outward. Make sure you can see your front big toe. Flip your right palm up. Lower your left hand down. The foundation is all for stability. Put your top arm up and back. Maybe stay here. Maybe find a bind. Turn your heart open if you like. Maybe half bind with the left arm. Maybe both hands reach behind your heart. Bend your front knee as much as you can. Turn your heart open to the sky. Big inhale. And exhale. Bikurita Virabhadrasana. Unbind yourself. Take an inhale. 
Parsvo Konasana Side Angle Pose. You want to shorten your stance a little bit. Right forearm can start on your right thigh, but don't sink into the shoulder. Keep spaciousness between your shoulder and your head, and your chest and your thigh. Take your top arm and sweep it over your head. Send your pinky finger down, thumb up, and use that strong forearm. Press into your forearm and lift your chest away from your thigh, using the forearm on purpose today. Take your left hand behind, maybe find a bind. Stay here and then maybe start to go a little deeper. Fingertips can come down, maybe you can wrap that right arm underneath. Back of the right hand to your hip. Maybe both hands reach or you can wrap your right fingers around your left wrist. Hug your outer right hip underneath you more. Roll your inner left thigh open. So use the stability of your feet here to steer your hips and then maybe look up. Deep breath in, a deep breath out. Adho Parsvokanasana. Look down to the mat, unwind yourself, come all the way back up to Nirvadrasana 2. Now hug your inner thighs toward each other, peel that back heel off the mat, reach your arms to the sky, big breath in. As you exhale, twist to your right side, pull your outer right hip back, spread your arms apart. Inhale back through center, exhale, twist to your right side. Pull your right hip back, bend your right knee. One more time, inhale, exhale, twist. And then take your left forearm over your right thigh, bring your right hand to your hip, reach your right arm up. And stay here, or maybe start to come for a bind, right arm behind, left arm underneath, you might need to help it. Maybe you can find your fingertips or you stay upright in a bit of a twist. Pull your outer right hip back, Bend into that right knee, walk your back heel forward. Foundation with the feet here, stability through the feet. Big breath in, twist more as you exhale. Inhale, rise up, press into your feet, reach the sky. Here's the vinyasa, plant your palms down, float that right leg, chaturanga. Press the tops of your feet down, lift your heart. Make your way back, extra chaturanga if you like. Adho Mukha Svanasana, deep inhale, and a long exhale. Inhale, left leg lifts to the sky. Left knee to left up arm, building Kundinyasana if you like, Chaturanga arms. Maybe extend your toes, right leg floats. Inhale, bring it back up. Cross your left knee to your right upper arm. You can hook the elbow, maybe Chaturanga arms. Maybe extend your left toes, right leg floats, Kundinyasana A, or extend your left leg through, right arm sweeps up, falling triangle. Either one, beautiful. Bring both hands down, sweep your left leg back, bring your knee in toward your chest, and step through. Back heel spins down, toes are slightly forward. Find the alignment. So the alignment is so important for stability. Front heel to back arch, and heel to heel, and then open up your arms. <clears throat> Wiggle your front toes more forward, create more space between the feet, gazing down your front fingertips. Knee is tracking outward. Try to make your front thigh parallel. Take an inhale, exhale, bend deeper. Inhale, extend through the arm, shoulders relax, create space here. Exhale deeper. One more time, inhale, extend. Exhale deeper. Deeper each of your Bhadras, an exalted warrior. Sit your top arm up and back. Find your variation. Maybe you hold your head. Maybe you have a half bind. Maybe you find a full bind. Wherever you are, keep bending that left knee more. Track it outward. Hug your outer left hip underneath you. Inner right thigh rolling open and spin your heart to the sky. Breathe. Ujjayi breath. Back to warrior two. Maybe shorten your stance. Left forearm feels stable in the left forearm. So press your shoulder away from your neck. Lift the rib cage off the thigh. Top arm reaching up. Use the strong forearm. If you're chopping something with the outer edge of your arm. Keep hugging your outer left hip underneath you. Inner right thigh open. Maybe take your left hand behind as a, a right hand behind as a bind. 
Maybe you can sn snuggle your left shoulder underneath your left thigh. Find your fingertips. Maybe you're using a strap. Maybe you can wrap your left fingers around your right wrist. Keep hugging the outer left hip underneath you. Use the feet as a foundation to spin your hips in the right direction. Maybe look up. Baddha Uttita Parsva Konasana. Bound extended side angle pose. Deep breath in and a deep breath out. Slowly start to look down. Unwind yourself. Come back to warrior two. Now hug your inner thighs toward each other. Keep your front foot stable. Peel your back heel off the mat. Reach both arms to the sky. Try to rock your back heel forward. Lift the back of your kneecap up. Take an inhale breath here. Exhale, twist to the left. Pull your outer left hip back. Open your arms, look to your left thumb. Inhale, back through center. You might feel some wobbles and wiggles like I'm doing. That's okay. Hold on to it by creating stability through the core and your strong foundation. One more. Exhale, twist. And then place your strong right forearm on your thigh. Lift your left arm up. And maybe you come for a half bind. Maybe you can take that right upper arm further across the thigh. Maybe even tuck it underneath you. Maybe wrap the left hand behind. Find a bind wherever you are. Peel that back heel higher. Strengthen the back knee. Try to twist and look back. Hold here for three, two, and one. Strong foundation. Peel yourself up off your thighs and reach up. Take your vinyasa. Keep that left leg floating if you can. All the way up. And all the way back. Chaturanga if you like here. Inhale, ripple forward, high plank pose. We're going to go right to Vashisthasana this time rather than the forearm. So right hand forward, roll to the outer blade of your right foot, reach your top arm up. Bring your knee in towards your chest, maybe you take tree pose if you like, or maybe Padangustasana bind. Hold for three, two, one. Let's turn it all the way back around, high plank. Left hand forward. Roll to the outer blade of your left foot. Reach your top arm up. Maybe you take tree pose. Maybe Padangustasana, extending the leg. Keep lifting the hips for three, two, one. Come all the way back, creating that strong foundation through the core. Little mini vinyasa here. Chaturanga, upward dog, stretch your belly. Downward facing dog. Deep inhale, and a long exhale. Climb your toes, bend your knees a lot, look forward, walk, step or hop. Halfway lift when you get there, release. Chair pose, Utkatasana, big toes touching, heels slightly apart, reach up to the sky. Crow pose, hands to heart center, lean forward. Bring your palms slightly forward of your shoulders. Outer shoulder distance apart and grip the mat with your finger pads. Step your toes back just a little bit, but stay with the big toes touching and then lengthen the legs the best you can, coming high on the toes with your heels. Slightly bend your elbows back, but in alignment with your shoulders, so not leaning out to the side. And then take your knees directly to the tops of the upper arms, not to the outside of the arms. So the Stability of this posture comes from this alignment of knees directly behind the upper arms. Rip the mat, start to hug in, round the spine, draw the belly button in toward the back body. Look forward and maybe as you tip forward, the weight coming into your finger pads, you can bend your knees and heels coming toward your bum. Keep pressing into your hands, Tatasana crow pose or Bakasana straightening the arms, crane pose. We'll hold here, and at the end, you're welcome to shoot back for your vinyasa or step back. Hold for five, four, three, two, and one. Keep your vinyasa. Adho Kashtanasana, downward dog. Deep full breath in, 
and a deep, full breath out. Inhale, right leg lifts to the sky. Bring your right knee in toward your chest, step forward, back heel spins down, Virabhadrasana 2 again. Take an inhale, straighten your front leg, heel toe your back foot in as you hinge forward, finding Trikonasana. Triangle pose, if you light onto your right fingertip, try to lift your chest, your top arm, creating that extension across the heart. Deep, full breath in, deep, full breath out. One more, inhale and exhale. Now bend your front knee, left hand to your left hip, start to step forward off of your back toes. Your right hand can come to a block. It will be underneath your right shoulder, so forward of your standing foot and to the right. Lift your back heel and press out. So we press down and out at the same time. Right foot stable, pressing into the earth. Press your left foot as if you're pressing into a wall. Open up your hip, try to stack your left hip over your right, and maybe extend your left arm. Maybe you can even look up, and if you need that block, it's okay. That's there for your stability, for your foundation, to make the pose more accessible. You can stay here. If you want to try for Chapasana, you might need to soften both knees. Bring your left knee in to meet toward your chest until you can grab the top of your left foot back and up as you spin the chest open. Ardha Chandrasana Chapasana. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Beautiful release. We'll soften your right knee a lot until you can bring both hands down to the mat and then pull the right hip crease back with your thumb. Bring both hands, fingertips tented, standing L-shaped pose. Take an inhale here. And exhale, bow in towards your standing leg. And you can even press into your hands and maybe come high onto your toes. And maybe you have a wall and you might want to move to the wall for this. A couple of hops for handstand. I have a wall here, so I'll move this direction. Your right foot is stable. Your fingertips are spread wide. Again, come high on the toes. And as you swing that left leg up and down, maybe you get a couple like hops. Oops, <laughs> that was a big hop. You can bring your feet toward the wall. Try to find your foundation and hold. Back to the mat if you are not on the mat. Slowly bring your left knee toward your chest as you stand up. Stand all the way up, bringing your left knee with you. You can hold on to your knee or maybe Padangustasana, that big toe lock. Stand up nice and tall. Find a drishti, your focal point, something to keep your gaze in one single focus. Extend your left leg as much as you can. Pull your hip back, pull your shoulder back, reach your right arm up. Take an inhale here as you exhale. Utita Hasta Padangustasana, open it up. Keep hugging your outer left hip underneath you, open up through the heart. Stability through the standing foot. A deep full breath in and a full breath out. And come back through center. Bend your knee. Bring your right hand to the outer left thigh, left hand to your left hip. So start to turn and twist to the left. And you may stay here. Or maybe you wrap your right hand around the outer left foot. Send the leg the best you can. Lift your left arm up if you like. And as you twist, reach that left arm back behind you. Try to hug your outer left hip underneath you. Stabilize through your standing foot. Parita Utita Hasta Padangustasana. Revolve hand to big toe. Breathe. Hold. And slowly come back through center. Bend your knee. Reach your arms up. Hinge at the hips. Reach forward and back. A lot of stability in that standing leg. Virabhadrasana 3. And then step all the way back and open up to the long edge of your mat. Make a big star shape. I'll turn to the front so you can see, but you're facing the left side of your mat. Hands come to your hips. And we're going to work with the forearms today in Prasarita Parottanasana. So if you need, you can bring some blocks with you so they're available to put your arms onto. Let's start with hands on the hips. Take an inhale. Make sure your outer 
Feet are parallel or slightly pigeon-toed with the big toe. Exhale, hinge at the hips and fold. Start with a halfway lift, palms under your shoulders. As you exhale and fold, start to bring your forearms down to the mat. You may need to widen your feet or you may need to bring your forearms onto blocks. Start to bring the hips slightly more forward so you're not leaning back. A long line of energy from the outer edges of your feet. And maybe you can start to bring the crown of the head down. Maybe play with shortening your stance and press into your forearms and see if you can create more space between the shoulders and the neck. And then maybe from here, start to pop up on your toes. And you can stay here. If you have a traditional yoga headstand, this actually might be a good time for it. You can interlace your palms or even just come with me as best you can. Bring the crown of the head down and just play with lifting the heels. It's just a little bit of lift here. You don't have to come up. If you have more experience, maybe you can pike the legs up from this position. It's pretty challenging to pike up from a wide-legged position. Let's see how you do. If you're still in the low position, that's fine. Keep pressing into the forearms and elbows. Create that foundation. Maybe you've moved to a tripod variation. That's fine too. We'll slowly start to come down if you're upright. Whatever position you're in, try to get your heels down before your toes. It gives us a lot of stability in the inner thigh, the core. <laughs> and then wherever you are, come back to the forearm. Pop back up onto your hands. Take a deep breath in, halfway rest. And as you exhale, turn your body to the front of your mat. Bend your back knee, lower it down. Keep your right knee bent and reach your arms up to the sky. Andanayasana, low crescent lunge. Take an inhale here. Create stability by hugging the inner thighs toward each other. As you exhale, sweep your hands back. Press your right heel down and into the ground. Toes curling toward you and see if you can fly your arms back as you float over your right thigh. And let's do that again. Back toes are tucked for more stability. Reach your arms up to the sky, big breath in, stretch the front line. Exhale, bring the hands back, press into your right heel, sweep back. One more time, inhale, reach up. Exhale, sweep back. Beautiful, now stay here if you like. And if you want, bring your hands under your shoulders, maybe to blocks or maybe even a block under the top of your right thigh, we're working into your variation from Ardha Hanumanasana into full Hanumanasana. And the, the ability to go deeper in this pose comes from the stable alignment of the hips. The right hip pulling back, left thigh forward and keeping the feet active. Back toes can be tucked, front toes flexed. Wherever you are, you can bow. Let's take five deep breaths. Slowly start to come back up, palms under shoulders, tuck your back toes, slide your knee in, plant your front foot, lunge position, inhale, three-legged dog, reach back and up, and if you like, you can turn into wild thing or Urdhva Dhanurasana, I suggest you spin your left fingertips open, let your right foot drop behind you, press into that strong hand, just like we do for Vashisthasana, open up your chest, maybe your feet are parallel, maybe your top hand is reaching for the earth, open your heart, big breath in. Big breath out, spin all the way back around, three-legged dog. Take your vinyasa. Make your way all the way back, downward dog. Deep breath in and a long breath out. Inhale, left leg lifts up. Bring your left foot through to the center. Back heel spins down, your Bhadrasana two. Take a full breath here, inhale. And exhale. Now straighten your front leg. Shorten your stance just slightly. Trikonasana as you inhale. Hinge forward. The feet are the foundation, the stability of this posture. 
reach your top arm up and use that to open the heart. So left fingertips are light. Try not to press into anything with your left fingertips. You can use a block to create more accessibility, but not to hold you. Deep breath in, breathe out. Two more breaths. Try to turn your gaze up as you can. Outer left hip tucking under, inner right thigh open. Feel the outer edge of your right foot pressing down. Deep breath. Bring your left, a right hand to your right hip. Soften your left knee. Use a block under your left hand if you need it. You step forward, Ardha Chandrasana. You can try floating the palm if you like. If you lift that back leg up, the inner edge of my foot tends to lift. So I have to focus on pressing it down. So maybe I bring a block under my left hand as I turn my chest open, but I'm keeping my fingertips light on the block, just there for accessibility, not to make the pose easier. Turning my chest open, reaching my right arm up. Maybe I can look up. Keep that foot active so you know where it is in space. Maybe you can soften both knees, bend your right knee enough to catch the outer edge of your right foot, and then kick the foot back and up. Chakasana, opening your heart, maybe looking up, challenging to look up in the back bend, pull, and then release, soften your left knee a lot. Bring both hands down to the mat, use your left thumb in your left hip crease to help pull it back. Keep your right thigh parallel. Start to walk your hands closer to your standing foot. Find a standing split pose if you like. We'll come in high on your left toes. Lifting your left heel, you can start to swing that right leg up and down. And you can also move to a wall for this. Working into a few hops for handstand. Come high on the toes. Try to move a little bit further away from the wall so you're not tempted to just smash your legs into the wall. There's a little bit of float that has to happen. <laughs> Unlike that example. <laughs> <laughs> Try to bring your legs together. It helps to hollow out the front body. You can look down between your hands. When you're ready, come down, come back to your mat. Standing L shape, left foot is on the mat, right leg in the air, lengthen. And then soften both knees, bring your right knee with you as you stand all the way up. Bring your knee in towards your chest. Preparing for Uticha Hasta Parangustasana, standing hand to big toe pose. So you can hold on here or find that Parangustasana grip. Pull your hip and shoulder back. Extend your right leg to any degree. Left arm lifts up. Inhale. As you exhale, open it up. You're welcome to stay or you can look over your left shoulder. Keep it hugging the outer right hip underneath you. Stability through your standing foot and your strong core. Bring it back through center, bend your knee. Get a twist toward the right side, so left hand to the outer knee, right hand to your right hip. Stabilize through that standing foot, pull the energy up the inner leg. Maybe you reach down for the outer edge of your right foot. Maybe you can extend, but hug the outer right hip underneath you. Right arm reaches up and back. Maybe you can look to your back hand. Hold for three, two, helps if you smile, one, come back to your center, stay standing, you've got this, you're stable, stronger than you think, you're able to draw some three. And then step all the way back, it's not easy, I know, open up in a big star shape. Hands to your hips, and again, make your feet parallel, slightly pigeon toed. Take an inhale here, and as you exhale, begin to lengthen forward as you fold. Bring your hands underneath your shoulders. Inhale, lift your chest. Exhale, release, and from here, you come onto your forearms again. And you can practice that same idea that we did before of coming high on the toes, lifting the heels. Maybe you want to come into a tripod headstand or traditional headstand or maybe stay on your forearms and start to walk your heels further and further apart from each other. Maybe you can even lift your toes working into Samokanasana, wide-legged splits, posture up and 
to be working on not always getting very much progress, but being patient with myself and knowing that the pose comes from a place of stability, not overworking and overstretching. So it takes time. Wherever you are, take about five to six more deep breaths. Stay connected to your intention, this idea of stability, your dedication. Last deep breath here. Your legs are wide. Slowly start to heel toe in. Come back up onto your palms. You've been floating, coming back down. Heels landing on your toes. Breath in. And as you breathe out, turn to the front of your mat. Bend your right knee, lower it down. Reach your arms up to the sky. Anja Nayasana. Take a big breath here. And we're going to create stability here. Hug the inner thigh. Pressing your left heel into the mat. Big breath in, right toes are tucked. As you exhale, sweep your arms back. Pull your left toes toward you as you dig your left heel down. Straighten that leg and float. Arms reaching back, floating Ardha Hanumanasana. Come back to Anjaneyasana. Reach your arms to the sky. Big breath. Exhale, pull it back. Last time, inhale. Exhale. You're welcome to stay here in this floating variation or palms under your shoulders. Feel free to use blocks as well under the hands or the top of your left thigh. Or maybe start to work toward further expression, Hanumanasana, working your way there, right knee coming back, left heel forward, and keep pulling the left outer hip back, front of your right thigh forward. And if you like, you can stay upright or take five breaths, bowing. Keep your left foot active. Last full round of breath here. Bring your palms back under your shoulders. Tuck your back toes if they're untucked. Lower your back knee. Slide your foot in. Spread your hands wide. Lift your back knee up. And as you're ready, three-legged dog. If you like, you can flip over to either wild thing or urdhva dhanurasana. Turn your right fingertips out a little bit. Come high on the toes. Lift your hips. Similar to side plank, press into your right hand. Maybe you work for Urdhva Dhanurasana, both feet parallel, left hand touching the earth. Breathe in, lift your heart, and then use that foundation of your strong, stable hand. Reach your left leg back up to the sky. Take your vinyasa. Make your way back. All the way back, downward dog. Let's take a little break here. Lower the knees down. Hips to heels. Bring your arms beside your body, palms facing up. Take a few deep breaths in Balasana Child Pose. Relax the front of your shoulders. Slowly start to peel yourself up, sitting onto your shin bones. So we will work into Pinchamaryasana, feathered peacock pose or forearm stand with uh, either on your mat or onto a wall. So I'll demonstrate it here a little bit on the mat and you can play with me as I go through it. If you want to move to the wall and uh, you already have a practice of that, wherever you want to practice it, you can. Don't worry if you don't have a wall, it's really good to create the foundation even if you're not quite ready to go all the way upside down. Now, what really helps a lot of people is to bring a block, if you have one, and hook your thumb and index finger on the edges of the block, and then bring your elbows in so they're parallel with each other and the inner edge of your wrist. So you get that sense of how far apart your elbows need to be. 
The biggest thing I see when people go into this is the elbows come out wide. So if you have a strap, you can also wrap the strap around your biceps to hug the elbows in nice and tight so they can't slip out of place. But what helps even more is to use the muscular activation of drawing the biceps toward each other and this will prevent the elbows from splaying out and also press into your forearms to create space between the shoulders and the neck. So if there's a lot of pressure there, the elbows want to splay out to reduce the pressure. So redu so reduce the pressure by pressing into the forearm and create more space around the neck. So on your hands and knees, come down onto your forearm. You can use a block if you have one or a strap around your biceps. I'll move to the wall in just a minute, but I'll demonstrate here. Just step the right leg back and the left leg back. We've been here already, forearm plank position. Keep rocking forward on the toes, draw the belly in. So create already this stability. And practice pressing into your forearms and see what happens to your shoulders. When you don't press into the forearms, the chest sinks down. So I want you to push the chest away. Maybe let it sink down and back up a couple of times. Do scapular push-ups to get that sensation of what you need to do to create stability, and that is to press the arms down, the forearms down, and create a rounding in the upper back. Then look to your thumbs and start to walk your feet in toward your elbows. Feet are pretty close together. You don't want them very wide apart. Same as you would do, maybe a little less than downward dog. Lift the hips up high, and you can bend your knees. If you pull your hips back enough and practice straightening the legs. So bend the knees and straighten the legs. And this might be enough for you, or maybe you start to lift one leg up and then bend that opposite knee and this will give you that opportunity to start to hop up you can try with the other leg bending the one knee lifting the opposite leg up and that gives you that little bit of swing that you need a little bit of momentum to fly up float up in case you're not ready to pike up pretty hard to pike up in this position you can learn to pike up from headstand but for today, we'll do it from forearm stand. I'm just gonna shift my mat a little bit. All right, so forearms come down to the mat. And if you're not at a wall, don't worry, you can still do this without a wall. Hugging the elbows in, walking the feet in, lifting one leg up, bending the opposite knee. And when you're ready, maybe a couple light hops of the leg toward the wall. Maybe the legs need to stay on the wall. Maybe they can float away. Keep pressing into the forearms. Create that space. Elbows no wider than your shoulders. Looking toward your thumbs. Try to hold that. Come back down slowly. <clears throat> and then you can switch sides. So let's try the other side. Forearms down. I need to move over just a little bit. <clears throat> Forearms down, not wider than shoulder distance. Lifting the knees up, walking the feet in. Let's see. Bending one knee, lifting the opposite leg. So I have my left leg lifting. And slowly trying to float up. Maybe meeting the wall, maybe not. Looking toward your thumbs. When you're ready to come down, come down slow, just sit back. You don't necessarily need to take a child pose, but just something to let your blood pressure come back down. So you can always practice uh, that against the wall. It's a pretty safe place to be. We'll try one more variation here with the headstand. So the headstand comes from the forearm. If you have a headstand practice, feel free to to get into headstand on your mat if you want to go to the wall and do it as well so interlace your hands elbows are in a triangle shape but your elbows your so your forearms are in a triangle shape now but your elbows are not wider than shoulder distance so same distance as you had when you were in forearm plank let the head come down make your way into your headstand don't jump though just either piking the legs or lifting the legs up against the wall However you get there. And then from headstand, you press into the forearms again, get that same muscular activation to create space so the elbows don't splay out. Then you can release your hands, press into your finger pads, 
and let the head release and come forward, finding Pincha Marasana. And in this traditional variation, the hands are flat, the body is straight, with a couple of deep breaths. When you're ready to come down, you can either pike down, lowering the head back to the mat, and use the pressing down of your forearms for stability. Or lower down one leg at a time. And here, you can take balasana, or just sit upright, and take a few deep breaths, and breathe into the body. Just appreciate all of the intricate working parts that build this stable foundation so we can add on to any of these postures in different ways and still rely on that strong foundation. Sneak our way onto our seat. You can roll off of your, out of your child pose or your seat wherever you are. Move the flesh around your sitting bone from side to side. Let's take a beautiful forward fold, simplify. Inhale, reach up. As you exhale, fold forward, Kashimottanasana. Inhale to lengthen, create a nice flat back, and then fold in. Let's hold for five breaths. Last deep inhale, and a long exhale. And slowly roll yourself out and turn yourself to the long edge of your mat. One hand in front, one hand behind, extend your legs, press out through your heels, toes curling toward you. Bring your right forearm onto your right leg, maybe inside of your right leg, left hand to your left hip, and start to turn and twist open. You reach your top arm up toward the ceiling and then over your ear. Feel free to stay here if you have a bind. You wrap your right hand around the outer right foot and maybe left hand comes on top as you turn and look underneath your left arm. Try to keep your left sitting bones rooted down, both feet active. Breathing into the side body, stretching out all of those spaces between the ribs, the intercostal muscles, the obliques, the side abdominals, opening your heart, and stretching the inner thighs and the hamstrings. Slowly come back up, switching to the left side, left forearm, maybe inside of your left leg, right hand to your right hip. Again, that strong forearm to help create a foundation, the stability to open up. Maybe you find a bind, you reach your top arm up and over your ear. Maybe your right hand comes on top of the left for the bind. With your right sitting bones rooting down, even though they might lift up a little bit, you can still stay active there. Pressing out through both heels, toes curling toward you. A lot of the same cues for every single posture in yoga. The cues are all about stability, creating foundation and alignment. Slowly come back up and we'll fold forward. Take an inhale, reach your arms up to the sky. And as you exhale, hinge at the hips all the way down as far as you can you might not get very far today that's okay just going to your edge if you are deep into it maybe wrap your hands on the inner edges of your feet you can touch your heels and pull your chest and chin toward the earth maybe turn your gaze to one side we'll take six breaths so three breaths on each side Slowly start to rise back up. Use your hands, bring your legs back together nice and easy. You can turn yourself back toward the front of the mat, give your legs a little shake. We'll take reverse tabletop and then a second set of the same or purple tanasana. Fingertips pointing toward you, press into your feet, lift your hips, 
bring your torso parallel, maybe start to let the head drop back. Squeeze your bum, lift your hips high. Take a few deep breaths here, open up through the shoulders. Lower back down, hug your knees into your chest. You're welcome to take a second set of that if you like, or we'll take Purvotanasana. So try to extend your legs and work toward getting your toes, the very tops of your toes to touch the mat. Fingertips back behind you, squeeze your shoulder blades together. It's a really nice front of the shoulder opening. You can feel that stretch across shoulder blades squeezing together. You can inhale, lift your hips. Press your toes toward the mat, maybe look back. Hold three breaths. Slowly come back down, hug your knees into your chest. Let's come forward onto our belly again, similar as we started. And in the beginning of the class, we did the forearms out to the side and roll to one side of our body. This time, take your arms out wide, a T-shape. You're going to look toward your left side, tense your left fingertips, and start to roll to your outer right hip. So you can step your left foot behind you. There's some different variations you can take here. Maybe you reach your left arm up. Maybe without moving your right shoulder, right hand, you can interlace your hands behind your back. So big outer right shoulder opener. Hold here for three breaths. This might feel really intense for some people, so just go as far as you can. Last breath. You're ready to release, come all the way back. You just come back into this T shape. <laughs> Notice the difference. And then keeping your left arm extended, look to your right, tend your right fingertips, start to roll to the left side. You can reach your right arm up if that's available for you, and maybe even interlace your hands without sliding that left arm too low. Get a big stretch into your outer left shoulder. Take a few breaths. And slowly release. And just take a few moments, palms underneath your, your face, forehead down. Breathing into the front of your body. And we'll take two sets of Dhanurasana from this position for both. If you'd rather take a back bend upright, you could take camel pose or Urdhva Dhanurasana or any other back bend that feels good for you. So from here, bend your knees, reach back. Now our shoulders are nice and open. You can reach for the tops of your feet. I like to reach actually for my shin bones if I can, but maybe for the first set a little higher. So you can reach for your ankles, where your shoelaces would be, or if you're feeling open, try to aim for the shin bone. Draw the shoulders back, squeeze your legs together. For the first set, we'll keep the thighs down. So press into your thighs, start to kick back and up. Creates a nice opening for the chest. Arms are extending. Keep kicking back, but keep the thighs down if you can. Hold for three breaths, maybe look up. You can lift your chest as far away from the earth as you can by kicking and kicking and kicking and then slowly lower down. You can make a pillow or bring your arms beside you. Turn your head to the right. Three breaths. And bringing your gaze back to center and this time Maybe as you bend your knees and reach back, grab a little higher up on the leg. So aim for the shin bone if you can. Try to close the knees and feet together the best that you can. You can start by drawing the shoulders back, kicking back and up. And then once you get that 
start to roll onto the soft part of the belly and let the knees lift up. And as you're kicking back in up, keep hugging the inner thighs. Feel the stretch in the tops of the shoulders. Maybe look up. Dhanurasana. Keep kicking. Take three breaths. Keep kicking. One more kick. Stay for the breath. And then slowly lower down. You can make a pillow or arms beside you, head to the left. And back where we started, lift your chest up, come onto your forearms for Sphinx Pose. Hug the elbows towards your hips. Energetically pull your elbows toward the back of your mat as you press into your palms and peel your chest forward and up. You can even look up if you like. You're welcome to stay here or take your hands a little wider. Keep your elbows where they are. Push into your hands. Find seal pose. Maybe even walk your hands closer to you. You can stay here or tuck your toes to widen your knees. Bend your knees, bring your toes together to touch, and as you press into your hands, start to arch back. Bring the back of your head toward your toes. You can walk your hands in closer. And then slowly, slowly lower down. Press into your hands enough to lift your chest. Slide your right arm to the left, roll over onto your back. Hug your knees into your chest, release any tension from your sacrum. Lower your right foot to the mat, cross your left ankle over your right thigh. Hug your right knee in towards your right shoulder and give your left hip a big stretch. Supta Kapotasana, Supine Pigeon. Let's take this into a twist. You can cactus your left arm or take it out to the side. Lower your right foot to the mat. Jog your hips a little bit to the left. Hold on to your left ankle as you drop your left foot to the floor. Keep holding on that ankle as you press your left knee away. You can turn your gaze and take it over your left shoulder. Arms can be straight or bent. Breathe in. Breathe out. Slowly come back to center. And now we'll jog our hips a little bit to the right side and drop both knees to the left. Keep your ankle connected. Cactus your arm. Walk your right foot more to the right and look over your right shoulder. A variation of spinal twist. So feel free to stack the knees if this is too much for you. Slowly bring everything back to center. Squeeze both knees into your chest. And then we'll lower the left foot, cross your right ankle on top, hug your left knee in toward your left shoulder, give your right hip a big stretch. And cactus your right arm out to the right or T-shape. Hold on to your left, uh, right ankle as you drop it over to the left. And actively press your right knee away so you'll feel a stretch into the top of the right hip. You can turn and look to the right. And bring everything back to center. This time, jog your hips a little bit to the left side, left foot out to the left. Drop your knees to the right. Try to get your left knee in line with your left hip by wiggling your left toes more to the left if you need. As the knees drop down, maybe you look to your left and take a few deep breaths. So 
good to bring everything back to center. Realign. Knees come out wide. Feel free to reach through and grab the outer edges of your feet. Walk side to side. If there's any other pose that you'd like to take at this point, feel free to take it. Maybe a nice gentle inversion. You could do a plow pose or shoulder stand as well. Take about 10 breaths. Whichever pose would feel good to you at this moment. Reminding yourself that it's the stability of this practice that is the foundation of the practice. It's not kneeling the poses. It's not getting to some destination. It's about focusing on building strength from the ground up. And wherever you are in this posture, really appreciating all that you give to this practice and all that it requires to find that beautiful foundation, that beautiful stability. Be ready to come into your final resting pose, Shavasana. You can take yourself there, laying yourself out on your mat, any position that feels good. And you might want to take Advasana, which I will demonstrate, that especially if you have blocks, it's a really nice release for the shoulders. Instead of lying on your back, lie on your belly and bring blocks underneath the tops of your shoulders. And let your forehead come down. And even if you don't have the box, you can still be here. And I hope wherever you decide to be, you can take some time to stay there. Close the practice today with a chant of Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. You're welcome to listen. You're welcome to share it with me. You could chant for peace. Peace for you. Peace for each other. Peace for the whole world. Take a deep cleaning breath in wherever you are. Full breath out. Inhale to begin. Oh. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. May we all know peace. Namaste.